The following is a WBZ 4 News special. Today's Patriots Victory Celebration. In 2001, New England's view of pro football changed forever. Well, Boston was always known as a Red Sox town. And even with the mild success that we had previously had, it was nothing like the experience that New England felt after winning the Super Bowl 36. It kind of put the Patriots on the map. This was a time when the Lombardi Trophy was still new to New Englanders. When more than a million people gathered to celebrate their first pro football championship. It was one historic party and before it ended, the Patriots were invited to dance on the Red Sox hallowed infield. The franchise had been reborn, its players cast as heroes. And among them, none was made bigger or remained humbler than quarterback Tom Brady. He made everybody feel special, like, you know, when a lot of times uh, the media or certain powers that be was trying to make it like it was just Tom, he would immediately diffuse that. The Super Bowl MVP was sure to make time for one of the men most responsible for his success. I was supposed to get out uh, of the hospital on Saturday afternoon after a Friday operation, if all went well. And he was stopping by on Saturday morning to see me. It's too early for cameras. And when he walked in, I was in intensive care in critical condition. The picture painted was not a rosy picture, but Tommy, he actually had, you know, stayed for most of the next 48 hours until uh, family members could arrive. Complications following gastric bypass surgery forced Charlie Weiss in and out of a coma for the next seven days. His hospital visit ultimately required more than two months of recovery. There, throughout it all, was his young quarterback. Tommy was one of the reasons why I got back to work quicker than, than you normally would because of his pushing. And I think that mentally and emotionally, he was a big, you know, a big uplifting uh, person for me. Our personal relationship and our professional relationship now became one, which I think allowed us to evolve together and move along qu at a quicker pace than it might have originally. Weiss returned to the sideline by the start of the 2002 regular season. The year began with a bang. Then it began to fizzle out. Here's what I'm talking about, one missed assignment difference between seven points and three points. They're on the goal. Hey, man, we find every way to lose the game. We can't give up long passes and big plays. I'm telling you, we suck. We 34. In 2002, New England missed the playoffs. Once again, the world champion Patriots looked like a once-in-a-lifetime team. Coach Belichick has always prided himself by having a sound fundamental defense that plays at a top level. Following 2002, he was frustrated that the defense didn't play up to his expectations. Heading into 2003, New England head coach Bill Belichick began a quest to upgrade his defense. The talent search led to a 30-year-old safety San Diego had just cut. It was a slow free agency period for me because I didn't spark a lot of interest because people thought I was hurt. People thought they believed what Marty Schottenheimer said, that I couldn't play anymore. And then New England called. I um, hop on a flight with shorts on because out in California it's about 80 degrees. Fly to New England, I, I get there, I wake up, it's like 
22 below zero. I'm freezing my butt off. One of their young guys picks me up, says, okay, Rodney, are you hungry? I'm excited because I'm like, I'm starving. I just had a long flight. Maybe we'll do something really nice, really like a Ruth Chris or something like that. They take me to a place called um, the Ground Round. Belichick has this little raggedy um, sweater on with this beat up holy pair of pants and he's just looking terrible and I'm, I look at him and I, he says hey we want you and when he gave me that look in my eye I said I'm a done deal I said let until my agent work out the numbers I want to be here this is the place for me his reputation uh, a hitter he was real aggressive he had a lot of energy the people that know me say that the people that know me say that. The people that don't know me, they say I'm a dirty player. What's that? Shut up! I'm gonna hit him right in his mouth. In San Diego, illegal hits had cost Rodney Harrison more than $200,000 in fines. He was the kind of player you hated to play against, but loved to have as a teammate. His 70, 80 percent is like some guy's 100 percent. We had to let him know, like, Rod, we appreciate it. You know, we love it, man, but let's just save it for Sundays. Leadership is something that's not feigned. Either you have it or you don't have it. Rodney obviously had leadership. It didn't take but a short time for the team to recognize and look to him for guidance. I think Richard Seymour pulled me to the side, and he just told me, we really f want to nominate you as a captain. And I thought he was joking. I thought he was playing a joke, but I saw a look in Richard's eyes that I only see during game day, so I knew he was serious. That was probably one of my proudest moments in my career. For them to look at me and say, we feel like you should represent what the pa New England Patriots are about. I mean, that really touched me. The heartstrings of New England were tugged unexpectedly just five days before the first game of 2003. A real stunner from the Patriots. Today, the team cut Lawyer Malloy, one of their most popular players. His locker was already bare by the time the media got to the locker room late this morning. Today's move makes Malloy an unrestricted free agent. You'd like to say that a team as professional as, as the Patriots would been able to handle the release of lawyer. But remember now, this is one of Tommy's closest friends. <laughs> he showed up every day, never missed the game, never missed a practice, never complained. Lawyer was one of those players that we loved on the team. Now we can get off the rock. Right. To see him go was like a part of, you know, all of us leaving as well. Everyone was hurt and stunned by it because I thought that it was gonna be, you know, Laurie and myself as the safeties back there. I was looking forward to it. That was one of the reasons why I signed with New England. Malloy inked a new deal in Buffalo, where he would play in the regular season opener against the New England Patriots. In their 2003 regular season opener against Buffalo, the Patriots would face their ex-captain, Lawyer Malloy, just five days after he'd been cut by New England. It really wasn't a lot of communicating going on between the coaches and the players. I mean, because everyone was so bitter at Bill for, um, for the situation with Lawyer. He said, you guys are going to be upset, but eventually you're going to have to get over it. It's part of the business. It makes a lot of sense. but. At the same time, we didn't get over it because we went out there and we played like crap. And here it is, in the end zone, touchdown! Touchdown, wide open! We, uh, we went up there and we were flat. They gave us a pretty good beat. And Lawyer had a great game. The absolute last thing the Patriots wanted, they got. I know it was all said and done. I can remember vividly the score being 31 to nothing. In your face, Bill Belichick. 
you know, all the critics started saying, hey, this lawyer Malloy situation is going to destroy this team. This team won't win eight games. I, I want to say this very clearly. They hate their coach. And their season could be over depending on how quickly they can get over this emotional devastation they suffered because of lawyer Malloy. He was wrong. He was flat wrong because he wasn't in our locker room. So how can he say that we hate our coach? A hell of a lot of us pissed off at Bill Belichick. Yes, but we didn't. We don't hate him. You know, I looked at Tom Brady and I said, you know what? I mean, this is National Football League. I was just released a month or six weeks ago or eight weeks ago. I said, I mean, it happens. I said, you know, we got to get over it. If anything, all all the talk and everybody around the media was was what they were doing was bringing us closer together. We came back Monday. We looked at the film. We saw the mistakes that we made. Bill yelled yelled at us and screamed at us, and we went out there Wednesday, and we had one of the most physical practices we've ever had, and it was out of our system. And now we're able to move forward. New England steadied itself with a win in Philadelphia. Back to throw McNabb. Steps, fires, picks off. Teddy Bruschi, he will walk into the end zone. Two weeks later, the Patriots looked lost again. We were very frustrated after game four against the Redskins because we felt that we had lost to an inferior team. Here we are. Are we going to be an up and down team? Are we going to be inconsistent like we were in 2002? As disappointed as we were after the Buffalo loss, the Washington loss, got the team saying, you know, that's the end of this losing stuff. The Patriots' next loss came in October of the following year. We wasn't thinking about a streak. We were just thinking about rebounding. New England would win its next 21 games. The longest winning streak in NFL history. And they owed it all short-term focus each week we would have a team game plan that would be devised to win that one game i recall that year i was beating the browns nine to three okay i recall that year i was beating the titans 38 to 30. new england was winning in every possible fashion thanks to the coach whose wardrobe lacked variety Bill Belichick believed that with different games come different situations. Yeah, no. The more situations a team mastered, the more games it would win. No, all I want to do is create different situations, keep them alert, keep them thinking. Situational football was something that Belichick would take us through. What are you guys thinking about right here? Six seconds. Things that may or may not come up in the game, but when they come up, you had to be prepared for them. We're doing and be ready for the situations, okay? And I don't want to hear about what any of the situations are. You just play them. Got it? He'd put a number of end of the game situations, whether it be four minutes to go in the game or 40 seconds to go in the game, and make me call plays according to that situation. You know, be ready for anything. I'm, I'm ready for it. Okay. A lot of guys, young guys and new guys like myself saying, why are we spending so much time on this? Are these guys just creating crap for us just so we can Thank sit in meetings? You know, we've been through a thousand situations and, and I know when this happens, you know, we're going to need to make a gut call. I recall the Denver Monday night game very vividly because we were down by one with a little bit more than two minutes to go in the game and we were pinned down inside our one yard line. We figured that if we were punting from our own one-yard line, we might not have much of a chance to get the ball back in time to win the game. So we began discussion on the possibility of taking a safety. High snap hits the goalpost. So they give them a safety. And that is going to be two points for the Broncos. Everyone on the sideline was looking at Coach Belichick like, what is he doing? Is he crazy? Guys are yelling and screaming, why are we giving up points? The Patriots were down by three, but the safety allowed them a free kick that improved their field position. 
Belichick trusted his defense to get the ball back in time for New England to kick a game-tying field goal. The Patriots held Denver three and out, but New England's field goal unit never got its chance. Some good, good situational football there at the end. Real good situational football. You guys did a great job there at the end. The Patriots' star was rising after seven straight wins. New England was now 9-2 and two and preparing to play the 9-2 and two Colts in a game that would change the playoff landscape in the AFC. We worked our butts off that week, and I just remember the preparation, guys, Willie, Willie McGinnis in particular. I came in 6 o'clock in the morning. He was there before anyone. Watching film on Indianapolis, lifting weights. Couldn't believe it. I looked at Willie and said, you're going to have a monster game. On the Colts' last possession, Willie McGinnis would have an opportunity to stand out. With just over a minute to play, Indianapolis was driving for a game-winning touchdown, and New England was out of timeouts. Ty Law is limping. Willie McGinnis is limping. It wasn't nothing major where I blew my knee out or nothing like that, but I twisted my knee. My knee got caught in the turf. So it kind of hyperextended. This defense has been on the field a long time here in the fourth quarter, and that stops the clock with 109 to play. We were taught, again, situational football. If you have an injury, get down. If you know the Indianapolis Colts, they see a player hobbling off the field, they'll hurry up to the line, they'll snap the ball, and we didn't want that to happen. Now, you know what's going on here? Tony Dungy and Peyton Manning are complaining they think they're faking to rest up and get more strategy. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, I just know we had a couple guys that were tired and, and uh, you know, cramping up really bad, had leg, leg cramps, and they really needed help out off the field. So, um... After the clock stoppage, the Colts gained a first and goal at the two. On three straight plays, they could not reach the end zone. On fourth down... Guinness was back on the field. Now, it is all on this. Fourth down. 15 seconds to go. The handoff to Edger. He's down. He's down. Willie McGinnis. They must rest. That's a one-yard line. Oh, you believe it. In another difficult situation, the Patriots recovered just in time. The way I lined up, I was disguising. He probably thought I was going to be dropping in coverage. But I was coming off that edge. 100 miles an hour. There you have it, Willie McGinnis. He stepped up big. Woo! That's hard! I can't believe we can win! At that point in time, I said something special is going to happen, you know, this year. Something definitely special is going to happen. Everyone was, you know, basically riding on, on you know, cloud, cloud nine. But Coach Belichick... Let's, let's go to the tape. That Monday, um, he came in and he put a film of everything that we did wrong. Everything. Situation. Missed tackles, the blown coverages, and everyone looked around like, I thought we just won. Belichick was training his team to be the best, something one Patriot felt he may have already become. Well, Tommy always thought that he was the best at just about everything. Keep talking, Blake! I'm the best player on his team! You hear that? He'd always be getting on uh, Belichick about letting him punt, you know, uh, to show his, his, his athletic prowess, other than just throwing the football. He went a terrible punter. He went a got you. The true punter on his team. <laughs> Tell him bad. No, he's definitely not the best at that. He's definitely not the best athlete. He's not even the best looking on our team. 
He's just a quarterback. Now in his fourth season, Tom Brady was no longer just any quarterback. Hey, come here. Off his guys, come here real quick. Tommy's development really was a rallying point for the whole team. We got to be mentally right to go out there and play, and play for another 30 minutes, right? I know things are good, but you know what? They could turn the other way. Where in 2001, the team rallied around him to help pick up the slack. By this 2003 season, now they knew that any time we were in any situation, they had a quarterback that could win the game for them. He shoots it long and deep for Troy Brown. Brady was a hero of New England's win in Miami. When the Dolphins came to Foxborough, his offense was struggling. You know, this was a game where we had an opportunity to start securing some playoff position. And you know, we, were, we were playing just a, a stalemate effort. You're acting like you're down 20. You're acting like a bunch of bunch of babies out there. Now wake the up. Quit making excuses. Play better, boy. Charlie Weiss's tirade did not exclude his star quarterback. The offense would manage only a field goal, but given the opportunity, Brady found another way to help his team. Fourth and nine, Brady. Will Pooch put it himself? The ball bounces down to the five, to the two, to the one. No matter what button, the Patriots push, it's perfect. The self-proclaimed best punter on the team set up a score. Back to throw Fedor on first down. Fires. Intercepted. Touchdown. Danny Bruschi. He caught it at about the four or five yard line and just waltz into the end zone. And the fans are throwing snow into the air. Most other places, they'd be firing snowballs on the field. They were just throwing it up in the air. Snow is flying everywhere. As long as they don't throw it in the air. <laughs> That's where the kid comes out in us. You know, we wanted to, after the game, go up and throw some snow with them, you know, and, and celebrate. When the snow cleared, the Patriots were the AFC East champions. As winter progressed, so did the Patriots, driven by a head coach who always kept his cool. He's not that guy that's gonna get in your face like a Bill Coward and spit in your face and get you pumped up and hug you and kiss you, and he's not that guy. Most people think that he's some vampire hidden in his, in his cave. Deep within Bill Belichick, all season remained the memory of his team's week one horror show loss in Buffalo. He brought it up after New England's 11 straight win as the season finale loomed against the Bills. Need a big push this week. These guys got us pretty good, okay? You don't always get a chance to settle the score during the season, okay? We got this one. We're gonna need to take advantage of it this week. For a team that at this time was sitting at 13 and two, you know, getting beat 31 and nothing isn't exactly the way that we expected this season to start. But we knew one thing, it was gonna end differently than it started. Patriots build a 31 to nothing lead. With less than a minute to play, backup players from both teams were in, as the Bills were on the verge of scoring. The bulk of New England's goal line defense returned to the field. The shutout was important because they shut us out. And trust me, when they had their foot on the gas paddle, they didn't let off. So we didn't want to let off. It 
wasn't until you got in the locker room after the game that you realized that that score was the same, the reverse of the score that we had opened up the season with. Payback. 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 Same score, baby. That's what we like. Same thing. Same thing. It's a way to finish on a great note. The end of a 6-10 and ten season prompted Buffalo to fire its head coach, Greg Williams. Searching for his replacement, the Bills targeted Charlie Weiss. If you're in the playoffs, you get a small window if you have a bye week where you could go ahead and interview for, for jobs. Of course, you can't get those jobs until the, your year was over. Because no one from the organization can offer you a job, other people that are not working for the organization relay messages about where you stand. You know, are you second? Are you first? Are you not in the running? The day of New England's playoff game against Tennessee, Weiss received an update on his candidacy with the Bills. Somebody close to the organization called me up and said, well, Weiss, here's your situation. You know, you know, if you lose this game, there's a good chance that, you know, you're going to be in Buffalo, you know, and be the head coach. If you win the game, you know, there's a good chance that they're moving on. Weiss's career advancement would wait as New England's playoff march continued on the coldest night in Foxborough history. I can't feel my hands or feet, man. I'm freaking out. I tell you, it was brutally cold. I'm talking about um, your worst enemy. You wouldn't want them to stay out there for two or three hours. It was. They even told people don't come out, you know, to the game. If you had heart problems or you were older or whatever the case may be, it was like stay in the house. It's too cold. On their first possession, the Patriots warmed the crowd. Time fires down the middle. Open. Good touchdown. The Johnson. Leading by three with less than two minutes to play, the Patriots needed to prevent Tennessee from driving into range for a game-tying field goal. Ice the game. Rodney Harrison brought the heat. McNair makes the snap. I remember his eyes getting big as I was coming at him, and I hit him. And uh, I, I remember him saying, oh, <laughs> when I hit him. And he just threw that ball up, and I just turned around, and I just said, please, 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 somebody knock this down. After a game, you get in the locker room, and then you could feel everything start to start to thaw. And I can tell you, it wasn't until the next morning where I can feel those toes move around a little bit. I can't feel my toes. I can't feel my fingers. I can't feel my knees. I can't feel my back. Man, that's as cold as ever been in my life, man. Ever. Tuesday at one, and we're get, getting ready for the AFC Championship. would host the AFC Championship against Indianapolis. In his first two playoff games of 2003, league MVP Peyton Manning had thrown eight touchdowns and zero interceptions. To prepare for the Colts' red-hot quarterback, Bill Belichick's brain trust had used New England's own quarterback. Backup, Damon Heward. One of the coaches on our staff he kind of gave a heads up to Damon on how Peyton operated. Reggie, we got help. Good hot. Damon did a good job of, of emulating Peyton Manning, all the signs and the checks, Protect, learn, learn. the signals, the walking back from under center to shotgun. <laughs> he should have got an Oscar for it. He even sounded like him a little bit. Let's go, let's go. 255. Disco, disco, 238. Other than the fact that it wasn't Peyton's body, you know, you would have thought it was Peyton playing in practice every day. That Sunday, the Patriots made the real Peyton Manning 
looked like a third string quarterback. The end zone, intercepted in the end zone, Rodney Harrison. We weren't surprised by what Peyton was doing at the line of scrimmage. That really gave us confidence because we were able to move around and disguise and switch. Peyton couldn't get a clear fix, you know, if we're playing too deep coverage, if we're blitzing or what. to the Super Bowl. Just 10 months after some said he was washed up. Belichick, out of all the coaches in the league, he was one guy that looked at me. He never asked me, are you hurt? How do you feel? Can you still run? Can you still play? He said, you know what? I know what you can do. It just, it worked out, and I was proud of it. The plan to sign Harrison was a success. So was the plan to stop Manning. One of the most valuable players on the field today didn't play one snap, but he had as much to do with us winning that game as anybody, and that's Damon Hewitt. That's a hell of a job. Oh, the AFC title celebration was capped by Heward's moment. Awesome. Two days later, New England's starting quarterback returned to the spotlight. This is a CBS News special report. I saw it on the news, and I was like, what? Brady's interested in politics now? It was just kind of funny, because I've seen him at, like, baseball games and courtside on ba in basketball games, but to see him... You know, at the political office, guys ragged his tail the entire week, and they rolled him. Willie calls me a little bush now, so they're always razzing me for something. The pregame laughter had faded by the morning of Super Bowl 38. By then, the final situation was clear. The championship was in sight. And this... We had been just waiting so long, and then for him to do that was just like, he's, he's teasing us. He's got it right here in front of us. All right, and if you think back to our season, no matter what tough spot you've been in, the reason why you won was because you identified the situation, you heard the call, and you did your job. And I tell you, I will run through a brick wall when he made that speech. That's what I was ready to do, run through a brick wall. And I think I had 52 other guys ready to run through a brick wall. And that's what happened. There's one champion. There's one champion. It'll be us if we play well. It'll be us if we play well. Okay? Good luck today, man. Play like champions. Play like champions. sooner had New England and Carolina taken the field for Super Bowl 38 than their battle for the Lombardi Trophy began. We wasn't even finished with our introduction and these guys are walking up like, you know, to our sideline. A big melee, a big fight almost broke out. The 26 scoreless minutes the teams exchanged blows. Then, they began swapping points. Brady, play action fake, fires in front. Takes the snap, in the pocket he goes, downfield, he throws it up for Steve Smith, and he's got it! Touchdown, Carolina! Let's answer right back now, let's go. Let's go, let's answer right back. It was 
wasn't no backing down from either side. We were both going at each other 100 miles an hour. They were giving it to us, and they were talking trash, and we was giving it to them. We was talking trash right back. And I tell anybody to this day, that was the most physical game I've ever played. The Patriots had not trailed in a game since week 12. Midway through the fourth quarter, they fell behind the Panthers. offense answered strength with strength. Richard Seymour comes into the game, and Mike Bravo comes into the game. They will both be checking in as eligible receivers. Seymour, the fullback offset right, play action fake, Brady fires, touchdown! New England led by seven with two minutes to play, but the Panthers refused to break. <laughs> Sean Foster, he comes through the hole. I'd make a tackle, break my forearm. I stay in the next play. I push Moose and Muhammad out. And I just hear my forearm crack even more. It was the most agonizing pain that I've probably ever experienced. My arm is throbbing, my forearm is swollen up. It looks like a, you know, like three softballs are inside of it. They whisked me off the field into the x-ray room. I was screaming and yelling, get me to the television so I can see the game. The x-ray technicians, they turn their backs, and I, I happen to open up the door, and I sneak out. What did you do, break your arm? In Harrison's absence, Carolina tied the score at 29. Floats it in the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Carolina! Now the only question is, have the Carolina Panthers left too much time on the clock? We're sitting here with 108 left to go. Okay, we got to finish the game, you got me? Regardless of situation, I don't care what it is, we're finishing the game off the next try. You got me? You got me? I'm sitting over there sweating bullets, and Ty Law, he looked at me. He said, Rodney, we're not going to lose this game. You know why? because we have Tom Brady. He'd already done it earlier in his career, so not once did it occur to me that we weren't going to score in this drive. It didn't, it didn't even enter my mind. It was, are we going to be in field goal position and Adam kick it, or are we going to score a touchdown? There's no more practice. There's no more meetings, man. This is it. This is the season right here. Direct snap to Brady. Rolls out to his left. Fires up the field, it is caught. Brady completed four straight passes to reach the Panthers' 23-yard line. And New England with eight seconds left to call a timeout. I'm on New England. It'll be about a 41-yard field goal attempt for Adam Vinatieri. like a fairy tale. And it doesn't matter what, what title you have when you go into a Super Bowl. It doesn't matter if you're the underdog or you're the favorite. You just take it in like it never happened before. You know, when everyone rushes on the field, I do something a little different because I rush to stands to get my wife and kid. I remember just uh, standing back a little bit from that stage and just being able to share those precious moments that you'll always remember the rest of your life. For the second time in three years, 
the Patriots lifted the Lombardi Trophy. This is everything. We waited so long. I waited 10 years for this. It's unbelievable. Best feeling in the world. This is what football is about. You can have Pro Bowls. You can have All Pros. You can make a lot of money. But nothing beats that feeling at the end of the game when the confetti comes in your head knowing that you're a world champion.